Hey there, everybody. My name is Brian Ewald, and I'm here at the PRS factory in Maryland to talk to you a little bit about looping. So I do some loops in some of the demo videos that they bring me in to do, and I get a lot of questions about it. I use it uh, in some of my live settings, uh, not all of them, but uh, definitely quite a bit. And I think it's a great practice tool, uh, songwriting tool. Um, Many of you out there probably have a looper. Some of you are familiar with it, but don't have one or aren't really sure of maybe where to start. Uh, some of you may have no idea what looping is. So let me just kind of give you a, a basic overview of the way I use it. Looping can be a, a pedal, a hardware version. There's software options. P often people loop any instrument. You can loop keyboards, vocals, anything. Um, the way I use it is a very simple, uh, plug a guitar into a pedal that will play back something that you play into it and repeat it in a loop. It can be a short one, it can be a long one. The most obvious use for it would be to strum a rhythm guitar part, have it loop back, and you can play a solo over top of it. I think that's where most people kind of start as guitar players using them. And it's a great option, but there's a lot more that they're good for. And even if that's what you're using it for, uh, I want to try to give you some tips of things that help me in uh, building them almost like songs and things to think about it, how you approach playing it rhythmically, sonically, the sounds you get on the guitar, where you put it in your signal path, all that kind of stuff. So let's dig in and have a, have a look at uh, some basics of looping. Having a look at what I have on this setup, this is uh, my electric pedal board, uh, slightly messy and in disarray and about ready to be completely overhauled. But the way it st stands right now, I'm using a delay pedal, uh, in this case the timeline and the looping function on that. Uh, there's lots of pedals that are just dedicated loopers. Um, many of them are just a single loop. That doesn't mean that you can't add layers. Even if it's a single loop, you can layer and layer and layer uh, to your heart's content. Here we're going to just talk about building some tracks, building some songs in um, with this. And we'll start off real simple with just a chord progression to play over and some things to think about there. So if I just want to strum a chord progression and record this loop, uh, this particular button on here will start the recording. If I hit it again, it will play it back, but it's still in record mode. Um, I need to stop that, otherwise everything I play will keep recording. Uh, but then if I hit it again, I can start overdubbing or layering on it. Every loop pedal has its own uh, functionality and the way it handles that. If it's just a single button, sometimes it's a double tap. You'll have to look into your pedal how to do it. Um, but to start off with, I'll just strum a couple chords, I'll loop it, and show you how to play over top of it. Now, if you noticed, I started strumming before I hit the loop. I didn't just start strumming and stomp on it. And part of that is just to get in the swing of the song, get into the feel of the rhythm of the song before I hit it. And you, what you need to practice doing is getting used to starting it and stopping it right at the downbeat of where you want it to start and exactly at the right point where you want it to play back, which is tricky and it takes a little bit to get used to. And if it's not exactly right, the loop is going to feel funny. Every time it loops around, it's going to feel like the, the rhythm of the song has a hiccup in it. Um, so that's the first problem most people encounter. A good way to practice that is don't start playing the loop or recording the loop right when you strum. Get into the rhythmic strumming. Even if you're just repeating the first chord just to get in the feel and then start the progression as soon as you, you hit. Uh, the other thing to, to think about and practice is sometimes building a rhythmic beat underneath and once, if you know that that is working, you can more uh, cleanly add a, a rhythm guitar track without having to stop and start at the right time. So if we get a four beat thing going like this, like if I'm just... And you listen back to it and everything sounds smooth, then... So I use that beat 
as a foundation. Once that beat was solid, I can hit record at any time. I can stop recording at any time without having to be so exact. And the, the set length of the loop is already set. So it's much easier to start adding stuff to it. Uh, so often that's how I do it. If I had two independent loops, I could have them on separate tracks and bring the chords in and out. But so that's another thing to try, creating a rhythmic bass. Um, now, in doing that, if you noticed, as soon as I started playing, it started playing back on me right away because I built a very short rhythmic loop and my chords could only be that length. Um, another thing to think about, though, is sonically how hard you play, the type of tones you play. Um, if I'm playing, let's say, a neck humbucker and I've got the guitar turned all the way up and I'm hitting the guitar pretty hard and I start layering things, have a listen to how muddy and messy it gets. It's kind of chaotic and there's it just gets kind of you can't hear any definition between the parts it's one tone it's all kind of played at the same um, the same level um, so think about the way you would hear a song with a band the hi-hat has a different attack to it than a snare drum is a kick drum uh, the way the different instruments sound they all come together to create uh, like a final sonic layering of a song, uh, but they're not all the same timber, not all the same sound. So utilize your guitar volume, utilize your different pickups. If it has a coil split, use that. Even just how hard I attack and where I pick on the string to create different sonic textures. And some of them should be quieter and some of them should punch through. Uh, but you want to practice layering things uh, to where everything is not full force and full volume. So starting off with my bed track, because I'm going to be layering over top of it, I might want my bed track to be pretty solid and full sounding because as I layer on top of it, I don't want it to disappear. So track number one or the layer number one, um, I'm going to get some, some punch out of. So that's layer number one. Switch to another pickup, roll the volume back a little bit. Now I might create something that sounds more like a bass, like neck pickup, full volume, maybe roll a tone back. bit of gain. Again, there's so many ways that you can use loop pedals. The way I use it is in a very uh, kind of classic rudimentary way compared to uh, so many people out there. Uh, I highly recommend uh, picking one up and trying one if you don't have one. They're a great practice and performance tool. If you own a loop pedal, I highly recommend you create a video of you building a loop. Take your favorite loop that you've created. Uh, if you have something creative that you've done that is different than what I've talked about, I'd love to see it upload it and use hashtag MyPRS so we can all check it out.